Hello, hello, this is Fear Dragon coming at you with another StarCraft II netcast. Today it's going to be another Zerg versus Zerg. And that's right, that means it might be a very short game, but hopefully we'll get to see a long game. Only I really know that. But anyways, let's go ahead and introduce the players. Over here in the bottom left hand corner of Cloud Kingdom is going to be the Trevor. And he's going to be spawning as the Red Zerg and is already sending out this Overlord right over here. He's going to have to make his way all the way across to scout out his opponent, the Blue Zerg, up in the top right-hand corner, Murazor. Murazor, the one who actually sent this replay, was also, um, has actually been in a, a, some of my other casts recently. So go ahead and check those out if you haven't. He sent me a couple of replays. Thank you. Actually, currently the only person who has sent me a Zerg versus Zerg replay. But uh, anyways, let's get back to the game. Looks like both of these players are going for very, very similar builds. Murazor just edging out one extra drone, but that won't uh, that extra drone won't be out there for too much longer. Um, both sitting now around 13 drones. And one thing that's really interesting about this matchup is when both of these players will decide to throw down their spawning pool or their hatchery. If you can throw down your hatchery a little bit earlier um, than your opponent and say before your spawning pool, but it's a very risky play and it can be very hard to defend. So it looks like the Trevor is going to go for that gas then uh, spawning pool first, while Murazor is going to be going for that hatchery first. So what this will mean is that if Murazor can defend any early aggression from the Trevor and really let this hatchery that he's built um, really pay off and allow him to get additional larva, allow him to get a little bit of mining off, then he will be in a very, very good position as long as he doesn't lose too many workers. But uh, we do see that spawning pool starting from Murazor a good 40 seconds or 30 seconds behind, so he's going to have to be very careful. Luckily for Murazor, the Trevor's Zerglings will have to run all the way across the map, and I do believe that by the time this spawning pool finishes and these Zerglings, um, these four Zerglings, will go across the entire map, I think that Murazor should be able to have started his Zerglings at least. So we're going to see how all of this stuff works out. It's going to come down to the micro to see if Murzor can really hold off any of this early aggression. We do see the queen popping out for the Trevor and also producing just Zerglings. Actually, now it's making one drone. Speed is also going to be on the way. It's important to note that Murzor actually has not gotten his gas geyser until just now. So his speed will be very delayed in comparison to his opponent. Now the Zerglings are streaming across the map. And I think that the spawning pool is now just finished for Murzor. So he is making those Zerglings. Four are about, about to pop. But he's going to have to make a few more to deal with these six Zerglings over here. Now this Overlord has good vision of exactly what's going on at Murzor's base. The spine crawler going down. These four Zerglings are going to go ahead and engage. But that's not a good engagement for Murzor. He needs to pull back these Zerglings. And he pulls back a little bit late. Oh no. Now the spine crawler getting target fired down. He will have to cancel that. And that's going to be very, very annoying for the incoming potential streams of additional Zerglings. Actually, it looks like uh, the Trevor uh, just deciding to make his own hatchery of his own and also droning up a little bit. So a very smart play by Tre the Trevor. Murzor does not know whether or not there are any additional Zerglings coming in unless he's been paying very, very close attention to his overlord over here to see if there are any more Zerglings being produced. But uh, actually, actually, I think that Murzor may have been doing that as he is starting to produce additional drones. He's looking pretty good in the drone count. Some larva popping off, so he will be able to create additional drones or maybe a zer couple of zerglings just to be safe. Meanwhile, down here in the bottom left-hand corner, we do see a baneling nest out for the Trevor. He's also mining from that second gas geyser that's going to allow him to get the gas that he will need to either make more banelings or eventually even transition out of his lair tech that he is researching. Meanwhile, we see that Murzor really not opting to go for that lair just yet. He ended up getting that gas geyser right over here. 
a little bit later than his opponent. And now just grabbing that second gas caster. So he's going to be a little bit behind in terms of how much gas is mined. But that will mean that he will be a little bit ahead in terms of how much how many minerals we, he's mined. As we can see, both of these players sitting pretty close in the drone count. So that means that these drones that are mining o gas over here for the Trevor, and have been for a while, they weren't mining minerals. So Merzor can count on that just a little bit as a little bit of an advantage. Mirazor continuing to drone up and dropping that Roach Warrant. We're going to have to see when this layer completes if the Trevor decides to go for some kind of Spire tech as that I think could cause quite a few problems and there we do see the Spire. That's going to really put the hurt on Mirazor if he's not prepared for this. He hasn't even started layer tech. He does not have an evolution chamber down so really he'll only have these queens to defend against any additional or any Spire tech. Um, Mirzor does have enough money, or uh, gas saved up at least, for that lair tech. We're going to have to see if he decides to do that, or if he's just going to pump out a bunch of roaches, as he is starting to do right now, with Zergling speed also completing. Meanwhile, it looks like the Spire is about halfway done. Now the Trevor mining off of all of his gas geysers, so he's going to have a lot of gas coming in, and you need that gas for those oh-so-vital um, Mutalist that will really be his a big advantage in this matchup if he can get it out before Mirazor really starts to get any anti-air defense. Uh, we do see a Baneling Nest from Mirazor, so I'm not sure if he has the right read on his opponent right now. Um, he doesn't really have too much vision as we can see here. He hasn't even really seen the main all that much. Meanwhile, it looks like the Trevor is also sitting in the same boat, but luckily for him, Oh, well, actually, maybe not so luckily for him. He does have a huge swell of roaches coming in, but these roaches are finally scattered out by those two money zerglings over there, and they are going to run straight into the main. Oh, no, that zergling does get straight into the main, so he's going to know exactly what's going on, but this is really the all-so-revealing play from Murazor that the Trevor scouted, and it looks like the Mutalists are pretty much popping. We have eight Mutalists about to pop. They're going to be able to put an end to this roach pressure, unless the roaches can actually just do more damage faster than the mutalists can kill them off. It looks like that is what Mirazor is going to decide to do. He's target firing some of the spine crawlers, also target firing a couple of the drones it looks like. So we're going to have to see how much damage is going. The uh, spine crawlers are being built, but I don't know if they're going to get up in time to really deal with this. It looks like in the uh, Unicast station we see 12 workers killed from Mirazor. Um, he's doing an insane amount of damage, so if he can uh, keep up this aggression and get this evolution chamber up in time he will potentially be able to defend against these mutilists when the time comes after having dealt and say oh my god the failing's getting so close to mining or hitting all of these mining workers but these roaches are still cleaning up some of these drones and wow let's look at how much damage ended up being done as all the roaches are cleaned up wow 28 workers killed and we see here 25 to 39 drones and even just a couple of more getting picked off right now with these zerglings and I do love this play from Mirazor constantly just rallying more and more and more and more units over to delay these mutalists from really being able to come over and just put on the hurt and that really gave him and bought him the time to get up this spore crawler um, I would like or these two spore crawlers let's see and it looks like he has two spore crawlers at each base. He's going to play it a little bit safe in terms of how many he gets. And meanwhile, it looks like the Trevor, knowing and anticipating, hey, my opponent probably has been playing safe. He's been using that as an uh, opportunity to buy some time. So he's going to go ahead and just pick off the free damage that he can by picking off the Overlord. That's going to shut down the vision of Murazor. That's also going to allow him to potentially supply block Murazor. But we do see Mirzor does have quite a bit of supply left over. He's also going to go ahead and do oh, uh, like that play, being able to cancel out that Creek Tomer for being built. That means another Queen's going to have to uh, spawn some more, uh, another Creep Tomer, until he can begins to spread that Creep Spread again. Let's see how much damage these Mutalists can do. They need to make up for quite a bit of damage that was done. Um, although, actually, wow! The Trevor actually already evening out in that drone count, but we can see back in the Unicang station, Murazor does... Oh, actually, no, he doesn't have any more roaches left, so 
um, bit interesting as he does have, okay, he does have that lair finally produced and he is going for the infestation pit. Very, very effective against these mutilists as they will be able to shut down that mutilist harass if they stick around for too long. And it looks like uh, the mutilists moving in, seeing if they can get any damage, whatever damage they can do is completely worth it as long as he doesn't take too much damage with these mutilists. And I think he's done a pretty good job in terms of control. He does have to be a little bit careful though, it does lose one as the queen's now all filtering in. And we do see this third coming down for the Trevor as he uses these mutilists to prevent Mirazor from really moving out. He says, hey, I have mutilists, and that means that you can't move out until you get out this, um, these infestors. Where is that infestation pit? Oh, here's the infestation pit. Until you, he gets out the infestors, Mirazor really can't move out because he doesn't have an answer to deal with these mutilists. So as long as that's the case, the Trevor is just going to go ahead and take this third expansion a little bit before the Mirazor really gets a chance to. I'm oh, sorry, not the Mirazor, just Mirazor. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, we do see nine infestors going to be coming out from Mirazor, so that's going to completely have drained all of his gas, and I wouldn't be too surprised to see, yeah, there we go, a couple of roaches popping out, and uh, maybe a little bit of aggression coming in, as we did see that Nidus Worm over here. The Nidus Worm is being built, where is it, where is it, where is the Nidus Worm? And... I actually don't see, oh, here's the Nidus Worm, right outside his opponent's base. Oh, even bringing the queens! I really like this decision. He's going to be able to keep alive all of these uh, few roaches that he does have for so long. And he's going to be able to do so much damage to those mutilists. The mutilists actually across the entire map, so really not prepared to deal with this. The other queens getting picked off. The infestors of the Trevor are up, though. And he has quite a few as well, getting some good fungals off. I will see the transfusers from the queen. The queen's not really transfusing, but they are doing quite a bit of damage to the rest of... Actually, it looks like... The Trevor deciding that he won't be able to hold this decides to good uh, toss out the good game, and that's actually going to be it. A very, very close game and very well played from both of these players. I still feel that the Trevor may... Oh, actually, it looks like the Trevor had used up all of his fungal growths, um, tossing out these infested Terrans, while the infested Terrans over here were from Mirzor. So I guess that is a very, very scary push from Mirzor. I don't think that the Trevor could have held that. So uh, anyways, thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for Mirzor for sending me this replay. If you have any replays of your own, especially if you're a Zerg or Terran player, as I'm locking a couple of replays from those players, go ahead and send those to feardragon64 at gmail.com. I'll let you guys go. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Have a good night. Or morning. Or, or afternoon, really. I'm not going to judge you too much on when you're deciding to watch your StarCraft. <laughs>